M. Uh, Yongju Che from the Pre-Submission Consultation Division of NIFDS. Starting from 2018, we have been providing the training on ICH guidelines. And this year, my division is in charge of organizing this guideline training. So th this is why I am the very first speaker for the training. As introduced, for four days, we will have efficacy, multidisciplinary, and quality and safety sessions. Before we have the, uh, the detailed sessions, I'd like to share the overall situation or the status of the ICH guideline implementation in Korea. So this is the agenda for my topic. I will go over the ICH in general and the process for guideline development. And then I will talk about the ICH Expert Working Group or EWG activity. And lastly, I will talk about the implementation activity of the Korean MFDS. Let me share what ICH is and what it does. As you know well, the ICH represents the International Council on the Harmonization of Technical Requirements for Registration of Pharmaceuticals for Human Use. It was established in 1990. The pharmaceuticals related regulatory bodies involving efficacy, multidisciplinary, and quality and safety started to talk about how we can harmonize the relevant guidelines and regulations. As you can see on the left side of the slide, as you can see, there are regulatory members involving 11 members and six industry members, and also 32 observers And ICH, when it comes to its structure, it has assembly. And ICH, or expert working group, which make, makes the guidelines. And also the overall operation is conducted by the ICH management committee. If you look at the ICH members and observers in more detail, as you can see on the slide, the ICH members include 17 countries or bodies, and ICH observers include 32 countries or bodies. You can see there are two different types of the members. Uh, there are regulatory and industry members. At the same time, they can be categorized as founding members and standing members and members. And then you can see the details on the slide. The same is true for the observers. There is a standing observers, which includes WHO and IFPMA. And there are also the regulatory authority observers and regional harmonization initiatives observers and others. So in total, there are 32 observers. I already shared uh, that the overall operation is conducted by the ICH management committee. This shows the details of the management committee. Here again, you see the regulatory authorities and industry associations as the members of the management committee. And our founding members, standing members, and there are also the members and also the standing observers, which are WHO and IFPMA. So there are the standing MC members, and also there are the members they are elected management committee members, and their term is three years. So every three years, the members for the management committee are elected, and Korea is one of them. From 2006, uh, Korean MFDS participated in the ICH uh, conferences. And from 2011, we participated in the EWG, or the Expert Working Group. And as you know, well, November 2016, we became the regulatory member of ICH. 
and we became the elected management committee member from June 2018. Next is the process for the guideline development. When ICH develops guidelines, they follow, it follows five steps. And before the step one, there is a pre-step one where the topic is identified. As you can see on the right side of the slide, you see that there are uh, certain members and they have to agree and adopt. For each step only, then we can proceed to next step. For the pre-step, whether it's the members or observers, anybody can submit new topics for guidelines or they can propose the revision to the existing guidelines. Until the mid December, the kind of the uh, topics or the suggestions are uh, submitted and afterwards some discussions are held. And after that, the management committee conduct the assessment so that they decide which topic need to be developed into guidelines. For those selected topics, they move to the step one. So during the step one, the expert working group is organized. So EWG experts develop the technical document as a draft. And once the draft is written, then they move to the step 2A. At this step, all the ICH members need to discuss and agree on this guideline. So all ICH members need to agree on this document. And once it is done, then they, they it moves to the step 2B. Then here, the draft guideline is adopted. So, although agreement was already reached at the step 2A, once again, uh, another round of agreement building is done at the uh, assembly. Then comes step 3. So, this draft guideline will be uploaded on the ICH website. So, it became public. So other countries or the in the industry members will look at this and provide some feedback. The EWG, which formulated the draft, draft, collect the feedback, and then review them, and decide to reflect which need to be reflected or not. And this is really important step because. Although we do not participate in the drafting exercise, everybody can put forward their ideas and feedbacks. And the final harmonized guidelines will move to the step four. That final harmonized guidelines will be adopted at step four. And once the adoption is done, then step five comes where the countries implement the adopted guideline. If you look at the ICH website, you will see the implementation status of each country for each guideline. Then I will explain uh, what EWG does. For the guidelines, EWG actually uh, create draft or they conduct the revision to those guidelines. So EWG is very important uh, group at ICH. As the membership grows, the number of the members at the AWG or the number of the EWG itself grows. So it's not easy to have smooth conversation so in order to have better operation, ICH decided to limit the number of the EWG or the, uh, the size of the EWG. So now about 25 to 30 experts participate in one EWG. In the past, 
the uh, operation committee members can recommend two members for the EWG, but now the founding member only can recommend two, and other members can recommend one. So although we are not able to participate in the EWG, some members or some observers wanted to understand how the process is being done. So this is why the PWP or the Plenary Working Party was created. So the members in this party can understand and see uh, the development of the guidelines or the revision, although they are not the members of the EWG themselves. Currently, there are 110 guidelines. And of them, there are 30 working groups. And of that, Korean MFDS are participating in 16 EWG. And if we put 13 EWG where the MFDS participated in the past and completed the activities, in total, MFDS has joined 29 groups. The Korean MFDS wanted to uh, convey the feedback from the Korean uh, pharmaceutical industry. So uh, we collect the industry opinions and try to reflect it in the w, uh, EWG. There is a one way for us to participate in the ICH guideline activities. So what we can do is that we can uh, have the recommendation from the IFPMA, which is the standing observer. And there are two Korean industry uh, groups, which are the member of the IFPMA. And they are the uh, KPBMA and KRPIA. So if you are the members of those Korean associations, you can be recommended by your organization to the IFPMA, which is the standing observer, to participate in ICH. And in order to expand the participation and our engagement, up to three experts can be collectively appointed to EWG in addition to the regular nomination. So this means that there, can, there is a widened opportunity for the industry to participate in ICH. So from this slide, you can see the 30 expert working groups. Of that, the EWG where the uh, Korean MFDS are participating in. So you can refer to the slide. And if you find any uh, EWG that you are interested in, you can provide some your feedbacks and ideas, share ideas with the MFDS. This slide shows 14 EWG where Korean MFDS is not participating at this moment. And you can also see the discussion group here the new topics for new guidelines or the topics for the revisions, if there are those topics, then alongside with the EWG, there are the discussion groups, as you can see in the table. Then what we do in order to implement the ICH guidelines at the MFDS, of the 110 guidelines, 90 guidelines are already implemented in Korea, and six partially implemented, and 14 not yet implemented. So you can see that about 90% of the guidelines are implemented. For the quality guidelines, there are 44, and of that, 41 are implemented, and three are not yet implemented. Not yet implemented guidelines will be shown on the slide, which include elemental impurities, or Q8, 19, q and and Q12. For safety guidelines of 18 guidelines, 14 are implemented and four are not yet implemented. Not yet implemented guidelines, you can refer to the slide. 
for efficacy guidelines, there are 31 guidelines and 26 of them are implemented and two are in the process of implementing E2BR3 and E2F are them and three safe, uh, efficacy guidelines are not yet implemented. For market disciplinary guidelines, nine of them are implemented four are in the process of implementation and four are not yet implemented. As you can see from the slide, MADRA will be fully implemented soon and M4, Q&A, R3 and others are not yet implemented. In order to implement the guidelines, MFDS is making continuous efforts. So for these guidelines, the five guidelines are the ones that recently we fully implemented. Five of them which have been recently implemented. And for not yet implemented guidelines, we have the plans to complete the implementation by 2021. They are 11. NIFDS has a website, and on that website, you can see information, up to date information on ICH activities and guidelines. And as you can see here, if you visit the NIFDS website, you can see Korean uh, translation of the ICH guideline and also the English original version of the ICH. And we do have the uh, EWG corner. If you visit this site, you can see what kind of the EWG activities are being done and at step three, when we collect the opinion from the industry, uh, this EWG activities corner will be the channel for you to put forward your ideas and opinions. What is important is that we can propose the topics for the guidelines. The industry uh, can think about new topics for new guidelines or you can provide some ideas of revision to the old guidelines. Your uh, ideas can be collected uh, by mid-December, then we collect all the ideas and then we can submit it to uh, ICH. This is critical. More recently, uh, we have a discussion session involving us, the academia and the industry and we were able to provide three new topics. One is stability testing of the biotechnology and uh, biological product guideline revision. And discussion group uh, the, on the quality is already discussing this idea. So if the discussion goes well, then in the future, the revision is possible. So I strongly urge you to provide your opinions and ideas on new topics. So as you can see on this slide, as a summary for my talk, ICH in the pharmaceutical area sets the harmonized standard for regulation. So with that, the international standard can be set and the countries and the governments around the world will follow and comply with the regulations. So based on that regulation, the products, the pharmaceutical products will be uh, manufactured, delivering better quality and better safety. So from the industry perspective, the ICH guidelines provides the standardized approach, which means that you can reduce time and efforts uh, to make your product be exported to other countries. And at the same time, it helps us to produce safer and better pharmaceutical product. So it will help better pro uh, it will provide better products to the public. So this is why MFDS is actively participating in ICH 
and have a plan to implement all the guidelines from the ICH. So I strongly urge the industry to pay more attention to the ICH and try to be more active, actively participate in the ICH activity as the association and as the industry. Thank you.